You kind of just get goosebumps and it's hard to be able to articulate what it actually means because it's kind of just a feeling. I'm hoping to leave a real legacy for those that play football, not only, you know, worldwide, but especially in this country. Every time I wear the shirt is always my highest accolade. and I take great pride in representing the Ferns and I hope that I'm lucky enough to continue to do so for many more years to come. And Michaela Moore plants that one into the corner of the net. Challenge Michaela Moore. I've been very German from a young age and I had like an idea of how I wanted it to go but it never ends that way and I think that's the case with everything in life. My mum always used to tell me that I had this like pyramid of things I wanted to achieve and like playing football was at the top like for New Zealand from a very young age. She said it was very evident early on that I just loved the game and I always enjoyed Saturday mornings because that's when we would go out and play and I played with boys up until I was 12 so I was kind of used to physicality and kind of speed from a young age and yeah, just really enjoyed it. Started getting involved with NZ around age 16, 17. For the first under 17 World Cup that I was a part of, that was probably when I started to see and I always had pictures of like the ferns on my wall, but I didn't really probably realize it until then that that was probably attainable. I wanted to. My mum would attest to that, like I said, but yeah, it was probably around that age that I was like, this could be a thing for me. I always speak, obviously, so highly of my mum. She was like my biggest supporter, my family entirely, but my mum obviously drove me here and there and everywhere, and she's been my rock and still is. Coaching-wise, I always pay homage to Tim Bush and Mike Devono. They're from Canterbury. They were involved with mainland football at the time, and very um, evident and present in like the environments that I was in and even personally when things kind of didn't go my way. Starting off with 17s, I, I didn't make the first trial, but they saw my potential, the extra time and effort that they put in, the love that they also had for the game that kind of shone through their teachings and they were just really cool guys and so caring and got the best out of everybody that they worked with, I think. So I, yeah, pay homage to them a lot. For me, when I first moved overseas, it was really challenging because anyone that knows me as a young kid, I was so shy. Even now, I'm kind of quiet sometimes, but yeah, I was a big homebody and so the mood was very challenging initially. But I think that in instance has grown me a lot as an individual and shaped me into who I am now. But I love Liverpool, I love Glasgow right now. I think what I learn as I become older is just like the people make a city. And I really, truly experienced that at Liverpool. You know, you wouldn't know that there's two clubs in that city, if I'm being honest. Sorry to any Everton fans. Yeah, the Liverpool Scousers are phenomenal um, and they really embody what it means to be from that part of the world and represent the club so highly. So that was, you know, an experience that I hold very dear to my heart. And yeah, now at Glasgow, another really cool city. Scottish people are so kind and friendly. Like the girls have taken me in like one of their own. and. I know, I think it's also like a Kiwi charm. It seems to be wherever I go, like everybody loves a good Kiwi. So I think like, yeah, I've left quite an imprint as well, which is kind of nice. I think the older I become, the more you learn just how important the off the step field stuff is as well. I think football as a vessel has the ability to really create a lot of change. For me personally, being quite set in who I am and how I identify now, I try to speak up when I can and like play my role, especially in the LGBTQ plus community. That's really important to me. So whenever I feel that I have something to say that I think is of value and that I'm educated enough on, I will do so because I'm a firm believer if I have a positive impact on at least one individual, then I'm doing something right.
I was fortunate, obviously, being a political woman at the time, um, openly out and, and gay on my social media. So they kind of picked up on that and asked me if I would like to do a video for Rainbow Laces with Liverpool. And it was actually supposed to be a male player at the time. So that was also exciting. But then I think it worked out amazingly to do it with Klopp because he just held himself so highly in that. Yeah, I think in the footballing world, you know that he's like really personal and open and like a really cool guy, but it, it, that's the actual truth. To have such a natural conversation, I think that's how it came across and that's like really beautiful because it actually was and he was phenomenal through it. And we had a script, but he never read from it. It was just like two people having a coffee. So that as well was something really cool to be a part of. And it's hugely important to have, you know, allies for the community and, and people like Klopp as well, who have such a high profile in the footballing world. After I did the video with Klopp, that had quite a massive reach. Um, and so I had quite a few youth in my DMs just saying how cool it is to see someone from New Zealand being involved with someone who's so prominent in the footballing world. And I feel very fortunate to have the family and support that I have with, you know, becoming, well, being true to who I am. So I want that for other people too. And if speaking out and, and you know, confidently showcasing who I am, help someone else, you know, feel like, oh, maybe that that's what I want. And especially from New Zealand, I think growing up until I was in the Ferns environment, that's when I saw people like me per se. So I think that is a big thing that I'm very passionate about currently. I very vividly obviously remember my debut. Yeah, I was so young and it was a very successful tournament, so I don't think it could have gone any better. It was that step after the London Olympics, that's when I started to get brought into the frame. I remember my first tour was in Switzerland and we actually had a really good tournament. We ended up winning the Valet Cup. I remember coming on against China. I think we were winning 4-0. I got like three minutes and then we got to celebrate with the trophy and I carried it the whole way home from, <laughs> from Switzerland to back to Auckland. So yeah, it was pretty cool too. But everybody was so welcoming. They all like took me under their wing very early on. I think with Rhea, she just embodies entirely what it means to be a fan on and off the pitch. She's so experienced and has so much knowledge of the game. And so for her to take me under her wing, I've just learned so much from her and the way she holds herself and her mentality, her drive to continue to be in the best environments possible to be a better fan. I feel very lucky to call her one of my best friends and I miss her a lot at the moment. So I'm excited to see her soon. I think my first goal for the fans was also very amazing. Kind of can't really write those two because they couldn't have gone any better. Again, on home soil in Wellington, you know, my friends and family were in the crowd. They were behind the goal that I scored in. Like, you can't write it any better. Again, after everything that I've gone through, just every time I wear the shirts, you know, will and is always my highest accolade. And I take great pride in representing the ferns and I hope that I'm lucky enough to continue to do so for many more years to come.